The more we probe the cosmos, the more questions we'll find that have no clear answers. No matter what you're curious about, you'll eventually run into the same big questions about the origin and fundamental nature of the universe and all that it contains. As far back as we look, however, we are still left with the same fundamental questions. How did the entities that serve as our beginning point come into existence? And was there ever a starting point to begin with? After a while, you'll arrive at the most fundamental query. How did something materialize out of nothing? Does the universe create itself? This is the most fundamental question possible. as it seeks to answer the concerns of origin and mechanism. So far below is where our scientific knowledge has taken us. If you enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe and like button, and let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Number 1. The Big Bang Theory The current scientific opinion holds that the Big Bang Theory that gave rise to our observable universe and all the matter and energy in it also produced the known laws of physics that control the expansion of the cosmos. The Big Bang Theory describes this phenomenon. Since this is the widely held view of where we came from, it shouldn't be a surprise. But can you explain what this means? What does the theory propose about the future of our universe? How was it formed in a tremendous explosion? And what evidence supports it? The theory is, at its core, quite elementary. In a nutshell, the Big Bang Theory postulates that around 13.8 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe sprang into being simultaneously. Everything had been compressed into an infinitely dense, extremely hot sphere we call a singularity. The cosmos as we understand it began when the singularity immediately started expanding. Number 2. What took place at the birth of our universe? Using the condition of the universe as a starting point, scientists have hypothesized that it could have expanded from a singular point infinite in density and finite in age. The hypothesis proposes that after the first expansion, the universe cooled to a point where elementary particles and eventually atoms could form. Over time, gravitationally massive clouds containing these basic building blocks clumped together to produce the first stars and galaxies. As a result, 13.8 billion is commonly accepted as the start of the universe's history. Scientists have pieced together a timeline of events beginning with the Big Bang and leading to the present condition of cosmic evolution through testing theoretical ideas, experiments utilizing high-energy states and particle accelerators, and astronomical observations that have witnessed the deep cosmos. However, much conjecture surrounds the early moments of the universe, which are thought to have occurred between 1043 and 1011 fractions of a second. Since the universe could not have been regulated by the physics rules as we know them, this period is impossible to conceptualize. Moreover, tests have yet to be done to produce the relevant energy. Nonetheless, many hypotheses persist regarding this moment, and many are compatible. Number 3. The Extreme Heat and Infinite Density of Matter That Made It Happen Singularity marked the beginning of the universe's history. All matter at the time was concentrated into an infinitesimally small area that was also extremely hot. Quantum effects of gravity are thought to have predominated physical interactions at this time, and no other physical forces are thought to have been on par with gravity. It is only possible to measure this interval in Planck time, which spans from zero to about 10 minus 43 seconds. The universe was in a precarious position because of the high temperatures and matter concentration. As a result of its expansion and subsequent cooling, the basic forces of nature became evident. There was a transition in the universe's temperature between 1043 seconds and 1036. At this point, the basic forces that control the cosmos were first thought to have begun to diverge. Gravitation split from gauge forces, including the weak and the strong nuclear forces, and electromagnetism was the initial step in this process. The strong force and the weak interaction formed when the heat of the cosmos 
drop to 1028 Kelvin between 1036 and 1032 seconds just after the Big Bang. The Four Fundamental Nature Forces To comprehend inflation, we must first learn about the four basic forces that dominate nature. These forces are the result of interactions between things of different sizes. Hence, they are also referred to as the four fundamental interactions of nature. As is well known according to Einstein's general relativity, gravity is the force exerted on matter due to the deformation of space-time by massive objects. However, charged particles exert a force known as electromagnetic force upon one another. When it comes to stabilizing matter, the strong force is critical because it acts as the binding force that keeps subatomic particles and basic particles together. Finally, processes like radioactive decay include weak force since they separate tiny particles. If you're familiar with electromagnetic theory, you know that James Clerk Maxwell first proposed the term electromagnetic force to describe the combination of electric and magnetic forces. Many scientists have considered and researched the idea, reducing all the fundamental forces to a mathematical equation. Electromagnetic and weak forces were unified in the 1960s under the name electroweak force, discovered separately by Sheldon Glashow, Steven Weinberg, and Abdus Salam, who shared the 1979 Nobel Prize in physics. Although their effects are sensed at different lengths, they are proven to act as distinct but complementary parts of the same unified force in high-energy processes. However, in low-energy systems, the dynamics of these two forces diverge. Number 5. The Period of Inflation the inflation period, which began with the birth of the initial basic forces of nature and lasted for 1032 seconds of Planck time, ended at an unknown period. Most cosmological models predict that the early universe was filled uniformly with a high energy density and that extremely high temperatures and pressures triggered fast expansion and cooling. To be clear, during inflation, neither matter nor energy changed position, rather only the empty space between and surrounding them rose. The exponential expansion of the cosmos began at a timescale of 1037 seconds, coinciding with the phase shift responsible for the forces splitting. The theorized event of baryogenesis, in which particles moved at relativistic speeds due to extreme heat, also occurred during this period. All kinds of particle and antiparticle pairs were constantly being generated and annihilated in collisions, and this is thought to be what contributed to the current universe's prevalence of matter over antimatter. When inflation finally ceased, all the constituent particles in the universe were mixed together in a quark-gluon plasma. Starting at this time, the universe cooled down so that matter could start to form and consolidate. Number 6. The beginning of cooling after the density decreased. Phase transitions and the gradual reduction in the energy of individual particles occurred as the cosmos expanded and cooled, eventually leading to the current configuration of the fundamental interactions of physics and the constituent particles that make it up. From this point on, less guesswork is required because particle energy will have decreased to levels accessible through particle physics experiments. For instance, researchers think particle energies declined significantly around 10-11 seconds after the Big Bang. Quarks and gluons united to form baryons like protons and neutrons at around 10-6 seconds, and a slight quark access led to a slight baryon access compared to antibaryons. It was immediately followed by mass destruction, leaving only 1 in 10 to 10 of the initial neutrons and protons, and no of their antiparticles because the temperatures were insufficient to generate new particle pairs, or neutron-antineutron pairs. About a second just after Big Bang, electrons and positrons underwent a similar procedure. Because of these destructions, the total energy of the cosmos is now dominated by protons and to a smaller extent, neutrinos, while the surviving protons, neutrons, and electrons no longer move relativistically. Big Bang nucleosynthesis began a few minutes into expansion, when the energy density of the cosmos dropped to around that of air and the temperature dropped to 1 billion Kelvin. Protons and neutrons began to merge to form the steady isotope of hydrogen and helium atoms. On the other hand, most protons in the universe never became part of the hydrogen nuclei. 
It took roughly 379,000 years for electrons to unite with these nuclei to create atoms. Again, predominantly hydrogen. During that time, the radiation had disassociated from matter and expanded across space relatively undisturbed. The cosmic microwave background is now thought to be made up of this radiation, making it the oldest known form of light in the universe. Number 7. The Cosmic Evolution the somewhat denser portions of the relatively equally dispersed matter of the universe became gravitationally attracted to one another over several billion years after that. Because of this, they became even more concentrated, eventually giving rise to the gas clouds, stars, and galaxies we see in the night sky every day. Current scientific consensus suggests that early galaxies evolved from clouds of stuff that condensed and rotated as the cosmos expanded. The Milky Way galaxies and other like it contain gas and dust that have been compressed into different clouds by varying pressures. Sometimes, clouds with enough bulk and the appropriate forces succumbed to the pull of gravity and disintegrated. If the cloud's mass had been compacted enough, nuclear processes would have started and a star would have been born. Our Sun is one of many that formed in the dense center of a flat rotating disk. The gas and dust in this disk surrounding our Sun collided and gathered into microscopic grains, which then developed into larger bodies known as planetismals, some of which had dimensions of several hundred kilometers. These planetismals combined in subsequent stages to form the nine planets and their countless satellites. Earth and the other solid planets were very close to the Sun, while the gaseous worlds were further out. Due to this period, when the current universe took form, it is referred to as the structure epoch. This is made up of the observable matter scattered in formations of various sizes, from planets and stars to galaxies, superclusters, and galaxy clusters, where matter is condensed, separated by immense gaps containing fewer galaxies. There are four possible forms of matter in the universe. Cold baryonic matter, hot dark matter, warm dark matter, and dark dark matter, all of which affect the process differently. The lambda cold dark matter hypothesis, where the dark matter particles travel more slowly than the speed of light, is the accepted theory of the Big Bang cosmology since it best fits the data. According to the theory, cold dark matter accounts for roughly 23% of the matter in the cosmos, while baryonic matter accounts for roughly 4.6%. In this context, lambda stands for the cosmological constant, a concept first postulated by Albert Einstein to demonstrate the stability of the universe's mass-energy balance. Here, it's linked to dark energy, which has sped up the growth of the universe and helped to maintain its large-scale structure relatively constant. Number 8. The Ever-Expanding Universe the astronomer Edwin Hubble made a groundbreaking discovery in the 1920s. Based on his observation, Hubble concluded that the galaxies and stars far away are moving away from our home planet. Furthermore, extensive and repeated studies since Hubble's time have proven that the recession velocities grow proportionately with distance. In light of these results, it can be concluded that the cosmos is indeed expanding. Number 9. What is dark matter and dark energy? Only around one-sixth of the universe's total mass is made up of the kinds of matter with which we are most familiar, including the Earth and the remainder of the solar system, galaxies, stars, and interstellar gas. Effects of the remainder of the mass in the cosmos, which scientists refer to as dark matter, can be observed by scientists. High quantities of it bend light from far distances noticeably and its existence in galaxies causes them to rotate faster than if only ordinary matter were there. However, its precise makeup is still unknown. A possible constituent of dark matter is subatomic particles that were born in the Big Bang but have not been spotted on Earth yet. Increases in the power of particle accelerators are being considered by physicists as a means of locating these elusive particles. Dark energy is an even more enigmatic force than dark matter. Dark energy, as suggested by observations of different supernovae, is a persuasive form of energy in the universe that exerts a repulsive force on matter, much to the attraction and repulsion between positive electric charges. 
This enigmatic substance, which makes up more than 70% of the universe's total energy, might be connected to the energy that triggered inflation. Number 10. What will happen at the end of the road? A reasonable follow-up question to the hypothesis that the cosmos had a beginning is whether or not it will have an end. Does the endless expansion of the universe imply that it started as an infinitesimally small point of infinite density? Or will it eventually deplete its expansive force and begin to contract inward, eventually resembling a little ball of matter? Since the dispute over the best model of the cosmos began, the goal of cosmologists has been to provide an answer to this question. The adoption of the Big Bang Theory led cosmologists to agree on two possible futures of our universe before the discovery of dark energy in the 1990s. The first scenario is what most people think when they hear the words Big Crunch. It describes a universe that has grown to its maximum extent and is now collapsing. It's only conceivable if the mass density in the universe is above the critical density. To rephase, the universe will continue to contract so long as the density of the matter is equal to or greater than some threshold value. On the other hand, the expansion will slow down but never cease if the density of the universe is equal to or lower than the critical density. To put it another way, in the Big Freeze scenario, the universe will continue until all the cosmic gas in every galaxy was used up and star creation ended. At the same time, every star in the universe would die, eventually becoming neutron stars, white dwarfs, or black holes. Black holes would grow in size very slowly due to collisions between them gathering mass. If black holes evaporated after releasing their final burst of Hawking radiation, the mean temperature of the entire universe would approach zero. At some point, the entropy of the cosmos would grow to the moment where no orderly type of energy could be recovered from it. This is the heat death scenario. More and more of the observable universe will disappear as it passes beyond our event horizon. As evidenced by recent studies such as the presence of dark energy and its effect on cosmic expansion, no one knows what will happen, but heat death is a possible outcome. Other hypotheses for dark energy, known as phantom energy theories, predicts that the ever-expanding universe would eventually rip apart galaxy clusters, atoms, planets, stars, and even matter itself. The Big Rip describes a possible future in which the very expansion of space itself destroys the universe. As long as the laws of nature hold, the universe appears to generate itself. Unfortunately for everyone, Inflation has an unfortunate side effect of wiping the slate clean of any data that might have been left behind by a previous state of the observable universe. While our thoughts and ideas are boundless, we can only make conclusions about things that can be tested in the real world. Like any other concept, absolute nothingness is entirely fictitious, regardless of how convincingly other arguments may be. Please press the like button write a comment about the video, and subscribe for more great content if you loved this one.